What is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm bringing you a clip from episode 359 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast. Her host Sam Smith, Mark Ara, Dom Tiano, and myself discuss this year's Bruins draft picks. And let's get into it. So first of all, um, we were live last Wednesday. We're going to kind of go as much as we can in chronological order from what happened. Uh, we're going to kick things off with the NHL draft. The NHL draft happened last weekend, and the Bruins made four selections in the draft First of all, their first round pick going with Dean Latorno at with a 25th overall pick. He's six foot seven. He's a center. He had 127 points last year for St. Andrews College. Uh, what is everybody everybody's thoughts on Dean Latorno joining us in the Bruins organization? Good pick. Nice to be back in the first round uh, for the Boston Bruins. Um, a work in progress pick. Uh, this is not exactly a home run, um, but I like that the kid's got upside, potential, whatever you want to call it. Um, and he's a big kid and he's a, a, and he plays the center position, which we can never get enough of. Um, and yeah, I thought it was a good deal. And I actually thought that that Cole Bioden was going to be uh, Boston's like target. But uh, when the, uh, um, Utah, whatever their name is, Utah took, um, took, yeah, took him. Um, Laterno was the next best one that I, I could see. So I, I thought it was a good, a good selection. Yeah. And sort of a piggyback off that too. You know, I've been in sports for a long time and the one quote that's always stuck with me being the undersized guy is you can't teach size, right? Six foot seven is a behemoth of a human being. And you can't, you can't teach that. And I think when you look at it from the outside perspective, it's really in important for the Bruins to get that size. You've seen what they've done in free agency, which of course we'll get to in a couple minutes here. But you, one thing you can't teach is size. And the Bruins got plenty of that at the draft. They got plenty of that in free agency. And now it's about teaching Letourneau to play that the way that his physical style and his physical frame once he fills out. I think it's only a matter of time before we get a guy like Tage Thompson, Thompson on the Bruins in the NHL. I'm going to throw caution to the wind here for everybody because there are scouts that say he could be one and done and turn pro. And um, coming out of prep school and – Let's say on let's say an Ontario prep school, um, or even a Canadian prep school. Um, it's very unheard of that they go one and done in college. Let's not forget he was supposed to go to the USHL next season. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, the other thing too is we'll never know who was on the Bruins list, but. NHL teams prepare like this for a draft. They 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 don't have 220 players on their board. <laughs> they might have five guys in and around where they're picking that they're looking for. We don't know if Letourno was first or whether he was fifth on that list. What we do know is that 18 to 30 range could have gone multiple different ways. Okay, so um, like I said, this isn't Shattuck St. Mary's or, you know, uh, uh, but they're working their way towards being that kind of prep school. And, and they've had a bunch of players move on to the NHL. So um, the history is there. I just want to take it slow with him. I mean, I, I'm seeing people call him the Bruins' top prospect right now. I'm sorry, he's not. He's not the Bruins' top prospect. I mean, he hasn't played a game of junior hockey or a game of college hockey, and we're calling him our best prospect. I don't know. I'm not saying he won't be one day, but he's not that right now. Yeah, I mean, he's committed to play uh, for Boston College, 
uh, for next next season, right? Next season he's playing with Boston College. Correct. Yeah. yeah. The ESPN graphic was wrong. It said he was committed in 25, 26 to BC. No, he's committed next year for Boston College hockey. So we'll get a good glimpse of him uh, in the hockey East, and the Bruins will probably be sending scouts over because the short drive over to BC from the Garden where they play. Um, so I'm sure there'll be Bruins uh, scouts at every game watching him and giving updates back to uh, – Well, I think right now it falls under Adam McQuaid and right. Jamie Lang and Bruner territory. I think the, the the scouts have done their job. Yeah, and, and and to be honest with you, I really wish he did go to the USHL path. If if they were if it was possible. Yeah. So well, uh, people, I, I personally really like this pick. I think it's going to work out in the long run. I think I agree with you, Dom. I hope they take it slow. I hope they don't rush this pick or rush this rush him by any means. But it maybe in the next few years, I could see him you know, in the, in the top AHL minutes or in maybe possibly some NHL minutes in like three or four years from now. Yeah. yeah and and the, the other thing I might add there too, right, is you got to have, you got to give him time to build out. He's still lanky. He still has room to fill out. You know, you give him a couple of years, he might put on a couple more pounds and then you have a guy that can even use his body weight to throw it around a little bit more. You don't want to rush that kind of thing. You don't want to say, okay, we're going to move right into it. Give him his years in college, let him build himself up, and then see what he can bring uh, post uh, post his college career. Absolutely. Well, uh, they didn't do anything in the second and the third round, but the, in the fourth round with the 110th pick, the Bruins went with a, with, with Elliot Gronwald. Uh, what are your thoughts on Elliot Gronwald? They used this pick in the Jacob Lauco trade, which we'll discuss in a little bit. But what are your thoughts on Elliot Gronwald being selected by the Bruins in the fourth round? Uh, personally, I don't mind the pick. I actually like it. But, but what we know is that the, the Bruins identified a player. They made the deal to get their guy. And, you know, over the last couple of seasons, I've learned to trust the scouting staff. I really have. Um, Don Sweeney has done a great job of building – uh, a fabulous scouting department, and uh, um, all we can do is trust in them. But they, that's the player they identified. They were worried they weren't going to get him, and they made the move to to move up and get him. Yeah, and and for a lot of people that that when I mentioned this pick, um, there's a lot of folks that said, "Why would you do this for a fourth rounder and so on? How can you identify players?" This is how good this scouting staff is is they they see the upside in later round picks it's not the all end all be all because we lost a player like jacob lauco um uh, lauco to me wasn't a consistent player all the time so and he possibly could have a better future in minnesota with more consistent nhl minutes um and the bruins identified something a, a possible you know, hole in their in their prospects when it comes um, when it comes to defensive the defensive side of the game, and obviously the Vermont native uh, Elliot is going to you know be a, a you know a work in progress and and be around for you know a couple of years down the road. But I like the way that the Bruins attacked this, and and you know like like Dom said, they saw somebody they wanted, and they they executed on a deal to make it happen. And I'm not I don't hate it. For sure. And I think one other thing you got to remember is that this guy, once again, we, we're going to talk about it a lot today, is just the new identity of this Bruins team. And they've seemed to, in their draft picks and their free agents, to be going down a different route than they've tried the last couple of years, where, you know, they tried to go with the more skilled route. It hasn't worked out all that well, especially when it comes playoff time. So you get a little bit tougher, you get a little bit bigger. And this is where he fills in, you know, he's six foot two room to fill out 200 pounds right now room to grow of course what's he going to be in a couple of years he already plays sort of that physical style that you're looking for could be an interesting pickup here absolutely uh moving on to our next pick um they go with jonathan morello in the fifth round uh of the draft people were i read a lot of reviews on this guy they were very mixed so what are your thoughts on jonathan morello I love the pick. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm oh. going to start this one here. 
you I'm go gonna ahead. give it over to Mark because I know Mark's been looking to talk about this guy forever. Mark, all yours, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, I wrote an article uh, last week about some some uh, Bruins picks that could be around when the Bruins do actually select from the sphere in Las Vegas. And uh, in the fourth round, I actually had uh, Jonathan Morello there instead of the fifth round where he was actually selected. Um, it, the kid's got good size. He's got good mobility. And, and he, you know, he plays a good two-way game, which is still a work in progress. Um, he's going to, to be the Fighting Saints of the USHL next season. And um, he's committed to Clarkson for 25-26. There was just something in this player that I saw from St. Michael's up in Ontario that that really stood out to me, and 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 I thought that a piece that the Bruins could identify with and, and work on, and and fortunately he was selected. So it kind of, I, that was the one guy that I mentioned that did get picked. So out of the twelve players I mentioned, one is getting one right ain't so bad. But um, no, I met him at development camp, and and you know he's a he's a real hard worker. Um, you know he still needs to fill out and so on, but I think that uh, and and we had a press conference with. Adam McQuaid at development camp this week. Um, and, you know, Jonathan Morello mentioned that McQuaid was like a mentor to him um, on how to position himself and, and get, uh, getting crashing to the net or getting to the net and, and, you know, creating um, space around the crease and so on without getting knocked over and, and blah, 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 because he's a, you know, a little smaller at this, at this stage of his development. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do with uh, Dubik. Um, you know, they went to the uh, Clark Cup finals last year, so it's still a pretty decent team, even though there's probably going to be a lot of turnover this offseason. But I'm excited to watch him in the USHL and, and then Clarkson after. I'm surprised he was there. I really, really thought he could have been a late third, uh, early fourth round pick. Um but again, I have to go to <clears throat> the Bruins scouting staff, Bob Wedick, who um, scouts Ontario for, for the Bruins. Uh, you know, Matthew Patra, Jackson Edward, uh, Dean Letourneau, um, and now Jonathan Morello. Um, all Bob Wedick uh, watch guys he's watched them a lot he's watched them all season long uh morello i think he can fly i think he's faster than people mm -hmm. give him credit for he produces uh points at a pace that probably would suggest you know a second round pick but um uh, you know it is the ojhl uh and you know, usually that's a stepping stone right to college. Uh, we've seen former draft picks, Bruins picks like Dustin McFall co come from there, who also went to Clarkson, I believe. Yeah, he went to Clarkson. Yep. Um, you know, they don't always pan out, but this kid has talent, has a lot of talent. Absolutely. Parker, do you want to discuss? Yeah, no, I think they've nailed it on the head, right? I know I've been reading a lot of them of Mark's articles on this exact guy. And I mean, there's not too much more to add. You know, he's, he's got room to fill out. He's six foot three. What's to come for him. He's got, he's sort of one of those five tool players, just a matter of, of finding his groove and, and really performing at the big stage. And we were talking earlier about the Bruins uh, changing their identity, right? Parker, you were mentioning they were trying to go for a speedy guy. This is the only guy they picked that's under 200 pounds. This guy's 178, but that makes him more durable to fly on the ice like that, right? So his speed, as you'd mentioned, Dom, is a good thing as he is creating in front of the net. He's creating points at, at a rate that, like you said, would be a second-round pick. So overall, at the fifth round, it's a steal, I think, right? Yeah, if he pay, if he pans out, like I mean, well, as of now, we don't know anything. Yeah, but as of now, as as of now, yeah, yep. you know, um, like I said, I was surprised he was there. Like I read Mark's articles, and I thought, no way. And I, and that's when Mark had him pegged as a fourth rounder. I thought, no way, he's not going to be there. I mean, I saw him live maybe four or five times this season, maybe three or four. 
I don't think I quite made it five. Um, you know, but I was impressed. Yeah. Uh, last pick of the draft, they go with another defenseman here, and they go to Sweden, and they go select Loke Johansson <laughs> with the 186th pick in the draft. Now, this guy coming out, he's 6'3", he's 214, he's a left-handed defenseman. Uh, he, he's the only non-North American player the Bruins selected in this year's draft, and I've heard some good things about this guy. What are your guys' thoughts on Loke Johansson? I've heard good things. Now, he was selected in the CHL import draft, and he did sign with Moncton. So he'll be playing in the Quebec League next season. Did not know that. <laughs> um, and this isn't a PJ Axelson, PJ Axelson pick. Uh, as we heard in the press conference, uh, Sven, what's his name? The Swede, 30 year. Uh, history with the Bruins in Sweden as a scout. He He's in his hometown, so Sven watched him a lot, um, knows the player, and, you know, we've got to trust in him. Sorry, I lagged again. I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, they have some trust in this guy. Yeah, uh, And Mon Moncton's a, a pretty decent place for him to go. Um, <coughs> I, I remember – there was uh, another Bruins prospect that we – it was Anderson, I believe, that played in the queue um, that came over from, I believe, Finland. Was it Finland, Dom? No, he was from Sweden as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's some good ties um, with Moncton in the queue. So uh, I think he'll get some good development there, you know, and then I uh, possibly move on to the AHL for at least a year and so on. That'd be nice. But, yeah, a decent, a decent player, good size. Um and that's what the draft did look like. It looked like uh, the Bruins were not messing around with uh, anybody that's under six feet tall. And, you know, they definitely address the size and, and, and upside in each one of these picks. So I thought it was a good draft, regardless of the people in the chat that said it was a terrible draft. I thought it was good for what they had, you know. Um, so we'll see what happens. And just to add uh, something to what Mark said, the 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 working relationship between – uh, Boston and Moncton. <clears throat> so the, the Bruins found a workaround to the NHL SHL transfer or the Swedish transfer agreement because um, only first round picks can come over and play in the American Hockey League before the age of 24 now. Interesting. Okay. So by him skipping that and coming over to play in the Canadian Hockey League um, bypasses that because he's now a North American. So I, I think the Bruins are circumventing the agreement and it wouldn't put it past me that they said to Moncton, um, we need a place for him to play. He's going to come over, select him in the draft. Absolutely, and 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 th is this the only CH player that uh, CHL player that the Bruins prospects have now up there? Yeah, because um, um, Jackson Edward is going to be in Providence next year, correct? Yeah, well, he could go back for an overage year, but he's not going back. Right, right. I don't think Adam McQuaid would have anything to do with that. No. So. The consensus is a pretty solid draft of what they had, right? I yeah, so. I, I think was where they were picking. Yeah, you, you, I have no complaints with this with this draft. I was actually when, when they selected Morello, I was more than fine with it because I really, really believe he should have gone at least at least two rounds higher. Like what you saw? Be sure to come back next week for episode 360 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast where hosts Sam Smith, Mark Allred, and Dom Tiano discuss the latest rumors and updates on Bruins free agency and the world of Boston Bruins. See you then.